Here's how simple it is to take your first steps building an AI powered no code SaaS app with Bubble.io. Welcome to Planet No Code. We're all about building amazing startups with no code using Bubble.io. And in this Bubble tutorial video, I'm going to demo to you how we can take the latest and quickest model from Anthropic, which is called Claude 3.5 Haiku. And I'm going to show you that first step to tapping into that power in a no-code app that you're building with Bubble. So we're gonna be diving into the Bubble API connector and diving into the Claude API documentation to do that. And it's only gonna take us a few minutes to do. But before I launch into that, if you are wanting to learn how to build a no-code SaaS app, you've got an idea for a business online and you want to bring it to reality, then click the link down in the description because we've got an amazing Black Friday, early Cyber Monday deal going on where you can unlock hundreds of tutorial videos all around Bubble, all around no code and our courses in one amazing bundle. So do go and check that out once you watch this video. Uh, so let's take a look at the documentation. If I go back a few steps, I had it before me. Here we go. Uh, so I'm in Anthropic because Anthropic is the company behind Claude and I'm in their API reference and I'm down here with create a message. And what we're effectively going to be replicating in Bubble is something that I've already done in the console here. If I, uh, did I delete a response, I think I just run it again. So I've got a system prompt and I've got a user message here saying write a blog. Uh, if I go here, you can see I've got Haiku 3.5 and I click run. Okay, and it's streaming that text that's being generated by the AI back in. Uh, into the preview window here. How do we plug this into Bubble? Well, you may think you click get code and get code is helpful, but it's in Python. There is no uh, CURL, CCURL um, expression of it, but we do get that in the documentation here. So this here is exactly what you want to be copying into your Bubble app. It's messy. It's an app that I've made hundreds of Bubble tutorial videos with. Um, but what we want to focus on to take our first steps is to go into plugins and go into the API connector. And I'm going to go ahead and add in a new API. So this is our way of connecting our Bubble app to Claude and exchanging data between them to get an AI response. So I'm going to label it Claude. Now let's fill in all of the steps here together. So if I go back into here, you can see that there are a number of header parameters uh, keys and fields that I need to put into the uh, header of the API call and then we have a data section and we also have where this data is being sent. So I'm going to copy this, this is known as the endpoint, and copy it uh, down here. Okay, now is it a GET request? I happen to know that it is a POST request uh, and there you see here. Most API documentation is set out in a very similar manner. Once you get to grips with it after a few times, whether that's using OpenAI, Claude, or even using something like Assembly AI to do uh, speech to text, it's fairly transferable how you get it to work with your Bubble app. So it's a post request. And then I have all of these headers. So I'm going to copy this all in one go just to make it easier for myself. Um, when I change it to a post request, we get this body section. So none of this is going in the body, it's just making it convenient for me because we have to include these headers. Now I'm going to set them as shared headers so that I can set up multiple different API calls to Anthropic uh, because I know that all of these are going to be the same. Oops, I didn't do that correctly. So I'm taking this bit here, pasting it in and just making sure I separate out the key and the value. The copying and pasting and cutting that I'm doing is just to make it nice and quick for myself. Do take note of where these fields actually end up. Now we don't have to put application JSON into uh, Bubble because that is a J that's a default value, but we do need to have our API key. Your API key is like a password. You don't want that going anywhere near the front end of your app. So we have to mark that as private key in header. Authorization is a very popular key name, but Anthropic wants us to use X API key. Uh, and then I'm gonna paste into here a uh, API key that I prepared earlier. Here we go. Okay. Uh, in your app, you won't see it being um, uh, covered by the, the hashes, or not the hashes, the asterisks or the circles. I'm just using a bit of custom CSS to obscure that in the video, but I will, of course, be deleting the key before publishing this video. Uh, right. So now let's move down to our actual call. So I will say uh, this is going to be send message. 
uh, and I'm changing this to action. We're not going to cover it in this video, but it needs to be action in order to place it as a action inside a workflow. So if a user clicks a button, we want to be able to run the action, make this, and it's then going to run everything that we're creating in the API connector here. Uh, let's go back to the documentation because here's the essential data that we need to send across. Notice that I'm selecting it on the inside of the quote marks. I paste that in. Right, so we don't want to send it to Sonnet. Sonnet is the middle of the road. Um, and also, I think as of right now, the most powerful uh, model that um, uh, so that Anthropic have currently got out, uh, but we want to be using a cheaper and quicker one, and that is Haiku. Uh, so if I go back here onto models, we can see what they want. So we could simply say Haiku and then the latest. Um, let's go back to Bubble. So we just copy and overwrite into there, and then. In the demo I showed you in the uh, Anthropic console, I had a system prompt. We won't bother with that. We'll just put in, um, put it in here. Now I am pointing forward to something that we cover in a lot of our AI videos. Remember, you can find all of them on our website, which is we need to make it JSON safe. Notice how uh, the JSON here is using curly brackets, speech marks, colons, etc., to distinguish what's going on in the code. But what happens if, it, if you're building like a chat GPT clone, something like that, and a user inputs one of those forms of punctuation into the chat field, you're going to get a syntax error because it's confusing what's code and what isn't code. So what we do is uh, we're using triangle brackets uh, to insert a dynamic value because we could just write message in here. And then if I untick it from private, this is now somewhere we can insert data into in a workflow in our bubble app. But in order to initialize it, to test it, we put our speech marks back in. We would JSON safe those. Again, we've got whole videos covering that topic. Um, do search them up. Uh, we JSON safe it to ensure that any punctuation, anything pesky that goes into the message is indicated as text rather than as code. Um, so all I want to do is get a really quick response here. So I'll say write a blog post about AI and bubble and building and awesome no code SAS app. Okay, now initializing the call is our way of testing it to ensure that I've not made any mistakes. And it's also the way of training bubble what sort of data is being sent and what to expect uh, in response. So let's initialize the call. Currently streaming is not available in Bubble. They did set BubbleCon uh, back in October. That streaming is coming, at, I think they said early 2025. Personally, I think AIs are getting so quick that there's no need to stream anything, uh, but we're waiting to get a response back from uh, Anthropic here. So we'll just keep waiting. Here we go. Uh, and here is our blog post. Now notice that there are some like special characters in here, like the backslash n. If you were to just save this into the bubble database, it's gonna backslash n is a line break. It's not gonna have any of these special characters in there, but it may have things like uh, these um, hash signs. Uh, that's because uh, I've not provided a particularly descriptive prompt. I think it's responding in Markdown. Um, and so if I wanted to, instead, let me give you a quick demo to say, um, respond as an HTML post. Okay, it should no longer respond in Markdown. It should change those hashes for like H1s and H2s. I'll just give it a moment to respond. Remember, Haiku is supposed to be meant to be the quickest. And then uh, I'm doing this video because we've gone from Clause 3 Haiku to Clause 3.5 Haiku. So uh, it's meant to be all the more powerful because of that. Uh, look, here we go, it's now coming back in HTML. So there you go, that's how you can uh, use Claude 3.5 Haiku uh, with Bubble, this is the first step. We've got a course on building a chat GPT clone. Once you can use Claude, you can use OpenAI, you can even use Gemini, they're all slightly different, but uh, they're very transferable skills. Uh, so you can check out our course, link down in the description, but you get all of it by joining our Black Friday bundle uh, by clicking that very top link in the description.